Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue working on the seat for my 1971 Snow Cruiser restoration or restoration that we're doing. In the first part of this video, we made the cushion. Now we made the filler for the seat back. Now we need to do some final trimming and get things ready to go together. Thanks for stopping by. The cushion that I cut last week was uh, a little on the wide side. I kind of like that. It's going to you know, give us a, a nice firm corner that's, uh, that's going to fill up the, the sharp edge of the seat cushion. We've got the back flush with the uh, back of the plywood here. And we've got the front that's kind of hanging over just a little bit. I think that is uh, likely going to cause us some problems, but I don't want to trim it off just yet. Also, you'll notice there's a little bit of a kind of a ducktail up on the uh, the foam here. That's not a big deal. Uh, with the kitchen knife, we can uh, shave that off. I think what we're going to end up having to do there is put a bit of a radius on it so that the uh, the front of the seat rolls off nice. The, the cushion actually has a, a radius on the front. That all looks good, but uh, before we get too carried away with anything more on this, I think we need to sort out our, uh, our back cushion a little better. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. I don't know exactly what we ended up with there, but we've got some curve. But the front of the, of the, uh, the seat back is supposed to have a little bit of a curve to it, so that's not a problem. I think we'll just shave the bottom here so that it, uh, the curve works in our favor. We're a little too tall, we're a little too wide. Um, the seat back is actually a little narrower, I think, at the top than it is at the bottom. So let's get the big cushion off, the piece of plywood off, and we'll start trimming this up and see if we can get it fit in the back of the cover. If we uh, lay out the back of the, um, of the seat back here, we get the bead on the bottom corner. And if we carry that around to the other side, that should give us basically the, uh, the dimensions that we're looking for. And I don't know how well this shows up here, but you can see we're basically at the edge, at the bottom and up at the top. We've got a little bit of uh, trimming to do here. And I don't want to nick the, uh, the cover. And now I need to repeat that little trim job. Now, well, you need to make it a little straighter. This is where having a, uh, an electric knife would be really nice. Now I repeat the same trim over on this side. You can see the bottom of the cushion here is even with the bottom of the cover. And I don't know what these marks are on the back of this thing. I don't think that's anything major. But uh, remember, we've got the three inch thickness of the foam that this has to fit down over top of. Looks like we could do with a little bit more push up into the... Well, that's interesting. We've uh, we shaved to match the back. 
and we definitely are doing a very nice job of that, but the front isn't fitting the greatest. Worst case, we can glue a little bit of this back onto the corners if we need to. That's the nice thing about this, uh, this kind of work, is we can always build up more foam if necessary. So this is the bottom of our board. We can check the, uh, the condition of the, uh, the paint job that I did on here. It's not perfect, it's got dust and that sort of thing in it. Not a big deal. Uh, I just wanted to seal the plywood up from the worst of the water exposure so that we don't uh, end up making a mess. This is the side that the, uh, the cushion is going to sit on. And of course the inside, the paint job turned out nicer. I think we're uh, probably safe to trim the front of this off nice and flush. The cover is definitely going to take some stretching to get it to fit all the way back. I'm still a couple of inches shy here at the back edge and you can see that we're pulling the front up. That's fine. We've got to trim, as I say, three inches off the back end of this so that it fits down over top of the existing cushion. So what I think we're going to do here is uh, flip this over. I'm going to throw a couple of tack uh, staples in just to hold things kind of where they need to be and uh, then we can start lining stuff up and stretching it out get uh, this nice radius pushed into the foam that kind of thing i'm going to take a wild guess that we don't want this to uh, have a whole lot of um, excess folded over we want the absolute minimum we're loaded with stainless steel staples because if we use standard staples, they will uh, rust out whenever they get exposed to um, get exposed to moisture. There's our three just to get things kind of started. In the corner here, we've got this uh, kind of a plastic bead, and I think that's going to give us. That might give us some troubles as we're uh, wrapping stuff around here. I think I'm going to throw a couple more staples in here just to get things headed in the right direction. And I will be completely honest, I'm not an expert in automotive or off-road equipment upholstery by any means. This is uh, in all honesty a learning opportunity for me and I'm bringing you guys along so you can learn from my mistakes. Okay, I don't know if this is going to be long enough or not. The seat base is made off of the snow machine. It was a template that I took by measuring the, uh, the actual snow machine. And this, uh, this cover seems almost like it's a little on the short side. That might reach. I think our next step is to uh, trim this seat back a little bit. As I'm marking this, uh, this seat back, I don't have it right down on the tabletop. I'm holding it up kind of flush with the, uh, with the bottom of the cushion here. We don't want to have, uh, we don't want to make it too short. As a matter of fact, I think I might even make it just a little bit long. That way it fills up the seat back a little better. Well, it certainly reminds me of what the original seat cushion looked like. It was all one piece though, of course, and it was kind of cast, like a cast cushion. I 
It certainly is going to take a little bit of uh, stretch to get it around. And I don't know that this seat back is going to uh, truly be at the back of the cushion here. That's um, going to give us a little bit of trouble. And you can see that this is supposed to have, I'm holding it back, but this is supposed to have a little bit of a radius to it. So I'm wondering if we can glue that in there and give it a shave. Again, it'd be nice to have the electric knife, but I don't. So I think we've got a good start here. I'm going to flip this back over, pull out those tack staples. Uh, they were just temporary. And um, then I think we're going to glue this seat back onto the base cushion and see about gluing this, uh, this cotton fabric over it. One reason is it'll help hold all, everything together. And the other is it'll help uh, protect the foam from any abrasion from the, uh, the inside of the vinyl. Uh, the vinyl is not too bad. It's not like leather, but still, you know, I've got the cotton. We may as well use it. Give it a, a good coat of the uh, 3M Super 77. It's kind of like a contact adhesive. This foam soaks it up really good, so you got to put a real heavy dose of it on. And then you got to let it sit for a little while to tack up. This is a piece that's been glued together with that adhesive, the two, the temper foam and the, the conventional foam um, on top. And you can see it's got a pretty good bond between the two. That's, uh, that's quite good. Still not tacking up yet. It doesn't take too long, but uh, it does take a few minutes. As a matter of fact, I'll bring you guys back when I've got this uh, ready to stick on. It's been, uh, I don't know, three, four minutes, probably uh, long enough for this to tack up. You get it relatively straight. I want to just let it sit. You can see it did a pretty good job of sticking down. What do you figure? Should we stick that as well? That doesn't look too bad. By all means, if you know more about doing upholstery work than I do, don't be shy. Leave a comment. Hey, maybe uh, consider one of those thumb up things while you're at it. The, that really helps the algorithm find these videos and share them to other people. And if you're liking the content from my channel, by all means, appreciate it if you could subscribe. Maybe ring that bell icon. That would also help. All these little things helps me make better videos for you guys. And you can see I've touched it and it's wet, but it's not really sticky. We'll give it a few minutes here and then when I touch it, it will be, uh, it'll actually pick it up. Now I could run an iron over that and get it to lay down really nice and flat, but I think that'll be all right. We'll just throw some glue on it and that should work. See how that picks up now that I touch it? Uh, it tells me that it's tacked off enough. We can put it and that'll give the, uh, the seat just a little bit of a, a uh, radius there. There's our cotton. Fold it back. Let that sit for a few minutes until it tacks off. 
One thing to keep in mind when you're on this vintage of snow machine, you don't really sit on the seat. Um, generally what you're doing when you're riding these things is you're kneeling on the seat and have your body upright with, uh, with one foot on either running board so that you can lean into uh, your corners, that sort of thing. The days of sitting on a snow machine didn't come around until about the year 2000 when Skidoo came out with the, uh, with the Rev uh, platform and uh, that was more of the kind of a rider forward and very shortly after that uh, I think all the manufacturers pretty well um, adopted that. The old Yamaha VK540, their big utility sled, I don't even know if they still make it, um, it was uh, it kept the old design where you kind of had a, uh, a seat to kneel on rather than something to sit on but uh, most of the newer machines are all you know Primarily you sit on them to go someplace. I think we tacked up enough here. That'll give us a little bit of protection. I think we're tacky enough. Those little wrinkles won't hurt anything. There's uh, another quarter inch or so of foam that sits on top of this that is uh, does the tuck and roll on the seat. So. I don't think uh, we have anything to worry about there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let this set up overnight. I'll come back tomorrow and we'll uh, put that cover on. Hopefully everything goes together as planned. And uh, with any luck, we'll have a finished seat. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Well guys, it is the next day. The glue seems to be set up fairly well here. I think we're to the point where we're going to try and uh, put the cover on this thing. I guess we'll uh, keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully this is going to work. One thing we need to make sure of before we put this all together is we got to make sure that we've got the uh, screws on the right side. Or in this case, on the left side. Of course, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to go throw my jacket on and just go out, double check the chassis, make sure that we've got those screw holes lined up where they're supposed to be, because I really don't want to have to take this all apart to uh, try and fix things if we get it backwards. Let me be right back. Well, it is a good thing I went and checked because the hinge is on the opposite side from what my memory told it was, told me it was. Hinges on this side, a little latch thing on this side. Well, I think we can probably flip this over and try putting some staples in the back here, similar to what we did at the front. We'll just tack it in place and then we'll work our way around. Hopefully this pulls nice and tight. Well, let's flip this over and see what the back looks like. It's 
So far I'm fairly happy with that. Now we've got to convince this front that it wants to uh, be long enough. And it's looking like it's a good inch short. We're going to have to uh, find some stretch here somewhere in all of this fabric. But I'm uh, really satisfied with how this, you know, it's not a perfect fit. Something tells me that the cover is not necessarily uh, perfect. I think this is something that some, you know, an enthusiast has whipped up in their home shop. It's not necessarily a factory built cover. Definitely the original didn't have genuine tuck and roll uh, stitching on it. It had just kind of an embossed uh, tuck and roll in the, in the vinyl itself. So this may be a little short. Uh, I've had it kicking around for five or six years, so it may have shrunk a little bit. Anything's possible. We'll see if we can get it to stretch. Certainly uh, having a nice snug fit is better than having uh, super loose, but um, we don't want to have it so super tight that it ends up ripping itself either. This is the, uh, the part that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm going to get this front around. Uh, let me bring you guys around so you can get a little better view of that. Before I do though, I guess I can continue coming down the sides. This, uh, this should work. Now for the last part. As you can see, we're a little bit tight. That's not too bad. I wish this was a little bit more rounded at the front. Hopefully this can kind of stretch out a bit and it will uh, let the foam fill up at the front. That's definitely uh, not bad. Well guys, I think we're going to call this one a win. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. If this is a cover that I had built myself, we probably would have done a little better job of designing the cushion and then making the cover to fit the cushion. Uh, as this was, we had a piece of plywood that we knew fit the snow machine. We had a cover that's supposed to fit the snow machine. And then we had to build a cushion that kind of fit the both of them. Given those restrictions, I think this has turned out pretty good. And we'll call that a win. I'm still gonna go around with the hammer, tap all those staples in all the way around the perimeter, but you don't need to watch me playing with a hammer. I'd like to thank everybody for taking time to watch. You can give me all those thumb up things if uh, you got this far in the video. And please consider subscribing to the channel. Getting some fairly decent subscriber growth these days, slowly creeping up. Hopefully we can make uh, some good numbers by the end of the year, but uh, always welcome to have people join. Maybe consider ringing that bell icon. If you want to support the channel even more, there's merchandise in the uh, links below the video. And we'll catch you guys in the next mass. Thanks for watching.